This is the Volkswagen Tiguan, and this is the Volkswagen Tiguan Allspace. And in this video, we're going to look at both of these cars. How are they different? How are they similar? And basically, we're going to tell you whether they're any good or not. If at the end of this video, you do want to buy either of them, make sure you go to whatcar.com to get the very best deal. And it would be great if you wanted to subscribe to this channel because we have loads of videos that come out every week. So the Volkswagen Tiguan, to put this car into context of how popular it is, there are only two models in VW's lineup that sell in greater numbers in the UK than the Tiguan. That's the Golf and the Polo. So clearly this is a very popular car. How did it get to this point? Well, in 2008, the first generation Volkswagen Tiguan was released roughly around the same time as the first Nissan Qashqai sales were just taking off. So the SUV boom started then and the Tiguan rode it all the way up to the present day. So very good timing for VW. This second generation model came out in 2016 and it was just pushed up market a little bit. So now it counts cars like the Qashqai and the Kia Sportage and the Seat Ateca as its rivals, but also premium cars like the BMW X1, the Audi Q3 and the Volvo XC40. This is the Volkswagen Tiguan Allspace. Now, this is a slightly bigger version of the Tiguan and it arrived shortly after the second generation model in 2016. And as the name suggests, it has all of the space. But perhaps that's a slight exaggeration because it's only 215 millimeters longer, which is about the length of this stick. And 110 millimeters of that has gone in the distance between the front and the rear wheels, which means there is now enough room to squeeze an extra two seats into the back of the car. And it also means there's a bit of extra with boot space as well. Plus, at the front of the car, you might not be able to tell necessarily, but it has a slightly different front end design. But I mean, I can't really tell the difference. But first off, let's start in the front of these cars. Now, you have some nice squishy plastics here and there. It might feel a little less plush than you're expecting from a slightly higher end VW product. But look at this carpeted door bins. Now that is luxury, unless of course you spill a drink in there or let a chocolate bar melt, that's not exactly ideal. But still, it's all logically laid out, certainly feels built to last, but it's not really exciting. So rivals like BMW X1 are just far more polished, but still really good quality in here, can't argue with that. And you get a fine driving position too, plenty of adjustment in the steering wheel and also in the seat. And the pedals are lined up perfectly and there's a handy place to rest your left foot as well. You get a good view out the front. And also interestingly, this second generation Tiguan is actually lower than the first generation model, but these front seats are mounted higher now, I know I said interestingly, you might have fallen asleep by now, but I actually find that semi-interesting. So you still have a nice commanding, good view out the front, fine driving position, but the view out the back isn't perfect because you've got quite chunky rear pillars there. But it's a bit stingy that entry-level S-Trim doesn't get front or rear parking sensors or a reversing camera. They're available on the higher trim levels though. Now, every Tiguan as standard gets this eight inch touchscreen infotainment system. And you know, it's something we're very used to on lots of other modern VWs and it's pretty easy to get your head around. You've got these shortcut buttons on the outside, which they aren't physical buttons, but it's still easy to help navigate through the menus. And the screen is reasonably responsive as well. It's not very laggy. You also have these physical dials either side, which are quite helpful. And it's good that Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is standard. But it's worth bearing in mind that the rotary dial that you get on the BMW X1's infotainment system means it's much easier to use that on the move. Okay, so now let's talk about space because this is where the Tiguan and the Tiguan Allspace differ, but not up front because they're the same here. So that means you've got plenty of room in both, even with this panoramic sunroof, loads of headroom, feels nice and wide in this interior as well, plenty of legroom and adjustability. So that's all great. Plus there's some helpful storage options too. So cubby hole back here, nice and deep. In front of that, slide this back. And it's also good to have the option of just making it look a bit neater by having this lid as well. But get rid of that, you've got two cup holders and just generally a nice big open space. And at the top of the center console, you've got another storage space with this rubber base that means that things just won't be flying around in there if you go around a corner too quickly. Now we've already discussed the exciting carpeted door bins, but there are other majorly exciting things to discuss in this Tiguan. Starting on top of the dashboard, surprise! Kind of like a van, isn't it? Having this storage space up there, which is quite useful and helps to keep things 
out of obvious sight of anyone who might be breaking in here, I guess. And also, this is potentially even more exciting than that. Within the glove box, it is air conditioned. So I was talking about melted chocolate bars earlier. If you chuck a Snickers or a Mars in there, even on a hot summer's day, they're just gonna be cool as anything. Now that is actually genuinely quite useful, isn't it? And also look, you've got a CD player in there so it can listen to tunes while it's stuck in there. And also if you go for a Tiguan in match trim or above, then you have some storage under the seat. Now that's useful for maybe, well, you probably wouldn't leave your keys in there, would you? But you might leave your house keys in there and then close it. And that just means that anyone thinking of breaking into this car would have no idea that you have incredibly valuable things in this car hidden within it because they just wouldn't see it. You could hide them in here, you could hide them under that, hide them under the seat. But now we're gonna look at how these cars differ for space in the back, which is a bit more important. Now in the back of this five seat Tiguan, it is impressive. You can see legroom, no problems at all. You've got loads of space to stretch out and even under the seat in front of you, you've got a good amount of room for your feet as well. And even with this panoramic sunroof, still a decent amount of headroom. If you are especially tall, your head might be brushing the top, but very impressive. And in fact, you'll be more comfortable back here than you would in a Volvo XC40. Now, squeezing three adults across the back might be a little bit uncomfortable over long journeys, and you've got quite a high central tunnel here as well, but it's still fine if you're coming back from the pub or on short journeys like that. You also have, again, carpeted door bins here and another kind of storage tray at the base of the seat to the side, which is quite useful. And also, if you do just have two passengers in the back, fold this down, you get an armrest and cup holders in the back too. Also, if you go for match trim and above, then you get these handy trays in the back, which are fairly useful, aren't they? If you have toddlers who need to catch up on their emails and um, need somewhere to rest their iPad because you have this groove in the back where you can just stick a tablet up there. And also you can slide out a cup holder, which is all quite useful, isn't it? And that's on match trim and above. Similarly, on match trim and above, you can fold the front seat down, which is very impressive. And in fact, it's the seating flexibility that makes the Tiguan stand out from its rivals because look at this, you can slide the rear seats forwards and slide them back. You can recline the seats as well or climb them. And generally, this helps separate it from its rivals. And in fact, the Tiguan gets 40-20-40 split folding rear seats as standard, which is very practical and essentially just means that these three seats can individually fold forwards independent of one of another. But let's now take a look at the Tiguan Allspace. Okay, so now I am in the back, the third row of the Tiguan Allspace, and there is not a lot of room back here. So I'm having to kind of hide my neck, hunch my back to make sure that my head isn't just stuffed up against the roof lining there. And I mean, it's relatively wide enough, I'd say. If there was another person sat next to me, I don't think the width would be necessarily an issue. And I suppose it's kind of handy having this storage tray up here and I've got a cup holder on my side as well. And look, knee, leg room is absolutely fine. But that's because the middle row is flattened. So if I pull them up back here, to somewhere where someone might be sitting, then you can see again, knee room is okay, but if we look at this middle row now, no one's really gonna be sitting in the middle row and be happy with that leg room. So I'm just gonna ask Dan to move the uh, seats back, our video man. So if he does that quickly, back to where someone else would be really sitting in the middle row, then I basically have no leg room whatsoever. It's non-existent. You gotta be uh, extremely flexible to be able to sit back here in comfort, really. So you should definitely see this as a five-seater with two emergency or very occasional use extra seats in the back. And when you consider that for similar money, you can have a Peugeot 5008 or a Skoda Kodiak, both of which are proper seven-seaters, then the Tiguan Allspace does lose a bit of its appeal. But you do at least get a bit more boot space if you drop those rear seats into the floor. So with the rear seats down, you can see the boot space is usefully bigger than the five seat tick one. Plus look at this, you've got a very handy spot where you can store the massively awkward parcel shelf, which is very useful. And there's also a torch back here that you can take out 
for, I don't know what, but that's useful. The five seat Tiguan is still very practical though. It's got a nice, simple, big boxy shape and every version gets a height adjustable boot floor as well. And you will fit more in here than you will in a BMW X1 or in a Qashqai. However, a Peugeot 5008 and a Skoda Kodiak are bigger and more practical than both of these cars. But the Tiguan is still practical. But what's it like to buy and own these cars? These are the key things you need to know about buying and owning a Volkswagen Tiguan and Tiguan Allspace. The five-seat Tiguan has a reasonable looking list price as long as you look at the entry-level model. But when you start getting more powerful engines and plusher trim levels, the price goes up significantly. But it's still cheaper than a BMW X1 and it should be cheaper to service than many of its rivals as well. And big discounts are available. So make sure you go to whatcar.com to get the very best. Spec for spec, you spend around £2,000 extra to go from the Tiguan to the seven-seat Tiguan Allspace. It's only available in three higher trim levels, which is Match, SEL and R-Line Tech. So there's plenty of equipment on offer, but it has a hefty list price as well. Compared to other seven-seat rivals like the Peugeot 5008 and Skoda Kodiak, it's expensive. But the Tiguan should hold on to its value well. So if you want to pay for your SUV monthly, then the Tiguan and the Tiguan Allspace are very competitive. Volkswagen doesn't have a brilliant reliability record, but you do get a three year, 60,000 mile warranty, which is the same as you get from Audi, Seat and Skoda. As for safety, the Tiguan scored the full five star verdict from safety experts Euro NCAP, and it gets automatic emergency braking as standard across the lineup. So the Volkswagen Tiguan on the road. The first thing to point out is that the two litre diesel engine with 148 brake horsepower is the best selling engine in the lineup. Now it's badged two litre TDI 150 and really it's pretty obvious to see why it's so popular because it does that thing of just offering the best blend of performance but with some decent running costs as well. So really whether you're going around town, whether you're doing longer motorway journeys, it just is fine, it's very good, you know? And no matter what your needs are, it should be able to suit them. For petrols, there's a 1.5 litre 130, but while it's the most affordable in the range, it struggles a bit up inclines or when it's fully loaded. The 150 version of that engine is much better, but it still doesn't have the low rev pulling power of the diesels. The two litre petrols are more powerful still, but more expensive and far thirstier. By family SUV standards, the Tiguan actually rides pretty well. It smooths over big speed bumps better than something like a BMW X1. That car is just harsher and firmer all round. Whereas the Tiguan is slightly more supple, but it's still firm enough to mean that it's not kind of bouncing up and down uncontrollably on undulating roads like the ones that we're on. So it still feels really controlled, but without being uncomfortable. And another big compliment to pay to the Tiguan is that it actually handles more like a conventional hatchback than many of its SUV rivals. So the steering, yes, it's a bit light, but it's very precise. There's really not much body roll at all through fast corners as well, so that's really good. And there's plenty of grip on offer. You can also go for four-wheel drive models to just get a bit of extra traction in slippery conditions if you do need it. The X1 and Seat Ateca are even more agile, but the Tiguan still outshines most other family SUVs. R-Line tech models get sport suspension, but it doesn't really make the Tiguan any more fun. So what's the noise like in here? Well, the petrols are especially smooth. The diesels, less so because they can be a bit clattery at tick over, and also when you're really going for it with acceleration. But when you're at a cruise, those diesel engines, and especially the petrol engines, disappear pretty much, and you can't really hear them, so they're nicely muted. When you are at those higher speeds, you get a bit of wind noise fluttering around the door mirrors, but it's really not that bad. And also road noise is impressively hushed, unless you go for a Tiguan with big old alloys, and then the road noise really isn't that great with them. Now, if you're wondering if there is any discernible difference between how the five-seat Tiguan and the seven-seat Tiguan Allspace drives, then there is not. The two cars are mechanically identical, so apart from a bit of extra length in the Allspace, really you have the same driving experience in both cars. So now you've heard everything that you need to know about the Tiguan and the Tiguan Allspace, which one should you buy? Which engine is the best and which trim level should you go for? Picking between the two depends on your circumstance. The Tiguan Allspace is a very good car, but the third row is pretty cramped. So if you aren't going to use the seven seats all the time, then maybe you'd be better off saving your money with the five-seat Tiguan. 
Go for match trim because it gets all the basics covered and throws in some luxuries like 19 inch alloys, cruise control and three zone climate control. S models are the cheapest, but they miss out on quite a bit of kit like parking sensors. For private buyers, we'd go for the 1.5 TSI 150 petrol with a six speed manual gearbox and two wheel drive to keep the price down. But if you do a lot of miles, then it might be worth considering the two litre TDI 150 diesel. On a cold day like today, you should probably go for the winter pack. So that gets you heated front seats and heated washer jets for the windscreen wipers. You can also, on top of that, add a heated steering wheel and if you really like your passengers, heated outer rear seats. Adding an electric tailgate is a good idea too. You can get area view with Park Assist, which gives you a 360 degree view of the car and it's very good value. A head up display could be a popular addition as well. So the Volkswagen Tiguan is a very impressive, well-rounded family SUV. But when you compare it to other premium rivals in this class, like the BMW X1, then they're just a little better polished in all areas. The Tiguan Allspace takes everything that we like about the Tiguan with five seats and adds two extra seats and a slightly bigger boot. So there's still lots to recommend about this car. However, when you do compare it to proper out and out seven seaters like the Peugeot 5008 and the Kia Sorento, then the practicality isn't quite as good as them. So if you're regularly gonna be carrying seven people in a car, then you might wanna look at those instead. And if you want the best deal on either of them, go to whatcar.com. And please make sure that you're subscribed to our channel because we've got loads of videos that come out every week. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a like. It really does make a big difference to us. And if you've got any questions at all about the cars, then please just leave a comment below and we'll get back to you.